Hello boys and girls and welcome to our first assembly of lockdown. I'm going to be putting a few assemblies together for you so it's really really good that you're here and watching. Some of these assemblies we're hopefully going to do live and you'll be able to get in contact with me and, and ask what you want me to do or what you want me to talk about. So I'm looking for lots of ideas from you because I've only got a few ideas myself but it's great to see you all here and uh, here's to our first assembly. Now here is somebody you might recognise. This is of course Wayne the Rock Johnston and the only reason I'm showing you his picture is that was because it was his birthday on the 2nd of May. Now I know many of you have had birthdays at this time of year under lockdown and it's a very very different experience to what you're used to. Now here is something else that has recently had a birthday. Does anybody know what this is? This is a telescope. But it's a very special telescope because it's a telescope that is based in space. And it's called the Hubble Space Telescope. Now this is an object that I have brought in a few times into assemblies. Usually when I'm talking about the wise men and, and the star at this time of the birth of Jesus. Um, the wise men didn't have telescopes like this back in those days. Uh, but the telescopes have helped us to see objects that are very, very far away. And they've allowed scientists to explore the galaxies and the universe and so on and to try and find out and ask questions about how we, we are where we are and how things were made and how things came to be. This is a very simple telescope and it's one that I have used quite regularly and it comes with a little viewfinder uh, to help you to see where the objects are. Sometimes when you're looking at objects that are very very far away it can be quite difficult to see. So I'm just going to attach this piece on and there we are, that's it. And all of the main parts of a telescope that are in this telescope also exist on the Hubble telescope as well, except obviously much, much, much bigger. So you may have noticed on the Hubble telescope there was um, a little flap which opened up and it protects the inside of the telescope from space dust and light and, and all sorts of things and different things that can maybe damage the telescope. And then whenever they want to use it, they open the flap. So I can do that as well. I have a, a protective piece cap that goes on to the end of the telescope. And I can also use a different part of the cap, of the lid, uh, which allows a little bit of light to come through. Or if I take this off, it allows a lot of light to come through. And what happens is the light from very, very far away comes in through the front of the telescope. And there are different glass lenses, sometimes made of different types of plastic on the inside and then I focus it using this. There's a little wheel here and I don't know if you can see that moving in and out. And there's an eyepiece in here so I look down here and the light comes in here, the light comes out here and goes into my eye. And I use this little device at the side to help me to find out where things are. So it's a much less magnifying part of the uh, telescope. And the Hubble does exactly the same thing except what they can do with Hubble images is to make them, uh, connect them into a computer and they can make images from the computer. And some of the images from the Hubble are absolutely amazing. And I've got one or two of them here to show you now. Our first picture is of the planet Mars. It's in the middle of one of the biggest storms that they've ever seen. And Hubble was able to pick out the storm in great clarity. The second picture is of the Eagle Nebula. It's 5,700 light years away which means that we're looking at something that happened nearly 6,000 years ago. Amazing pictures. The story that I have for you today is the story that I've told before in assembly a couple of times. It's the story of Wilhelm Röntgen and of what happened to him at school and then what happened to him later in his life when he went on to discover x-rays. I'm sure you've heard of x-rays. Anybody who's been to a hospital will have seen a sign for an x-ray department. Maybe you've had an x-ray taken of part of your body that you've had damaged and doctors want to find out what's going on inside. This is the story of how Wilhelm Röntgen discovered x-rays. In the darkened room, the professor trembled with excitement. Before him stood a cone-shaped glass tube carefully wrapped in black cardboard. An electromagnetic current throbbed through the tube. On a nearby cardboard screen, a faint green light flickered. That light, he knew, was caused by invisible rays from the tube, rays powerful enough to pierce the black paper. They were rays unknown to science. 
Wilhelm Röntgen was born in Germany but moved to the Netherlands when he was in nursery school. Here is one of the first designs for an x-ray machine. It's very different to what we would see today in a hospital. And in this picture, two scientists, one of which is having his hand x-rayed, can be seen using the apparatus. This is one of the very, very first x-rays taken by Röntgen. Today, x-rays are much, much clearer than the x-rays that Wilhelm Röntgen took well over 100 years ago. They can tell us so much about what is happening in the body. And I'm sure many of you have had an x-ray taken because maybe you've broken a, a bone in your leg or a hand or maybe you've hurt your head and you've had to get your head uh, x-rayed to make sure that the bone in your head, the skull, isn't broken. I had to get x-rays taken, would you believe, of my eyes. Although there are no bones in our eyes, I'd been using a piece of machinery called an angle grinder and I hadn't been wearing the proper goggles and the doctor who was looking after me said that I really needed to get my eyes tested to make sure that there wasn't any tiny little bit of fragments of metal in my eyes which would show up on the x-ray. X-rays are usually taken in hospitals and clinics in very very safe surroundings and they help doctors to find out what's wrong with us on the inside. But they can also be taken in veterinary surgeons. This dog has swallowed something. Can you see what is showing up on the x-ray as well as the bones of the dog? I don't think the owners are going to be too happy about that. Scientists have also taken x-rays of paintings. In this painting, the artist used lead-based paints to make the, the colours really shine through. And you can see the lead on the x-ray very clearly. Röntgen was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1901 for physics for his great work on discovering x-rays. But what about Röntgen's time at school? What happened that made it so difficult for him? When Röntgen was about 16, maybe 17 years old, he was expelled from school. And what made it worse is that he was expelled from school when he hadn't actually done anything wrong. He had been accused of making a caricature, a picture, a very cruel picture of a member of staff, which was against the school rules. And although the story tells us that he didn't do it, he was found guilty of this, making this picture, and he was expelled from school. And this meant that Röntgen, if it had been today, was not able to complete his A-levels, and that meant that he could not go to university. So life was really, really bad for Röntgen. He had been accused of doing something that he had never done and he was also in danger of not being able to go to university to study physics and engineering which he really really wanted to do. He eventually managed to get a place in a university in Germany. He had been living in the Netherlands at the time but he found that a university would be prepared to accept him if he passed their entrance exam which he did and he went on to study physics there and eventually his great work on x-rays developed from that time. So how did Wilhelm Röntgen overcome his difficulties? Well I suppose the first thing is that he didn't give up. Although he hadn't been able to go to the university that he really wanted to, he was able to use a different approach and that approach really really helped him to learn and to study and to find out all about the science that he needed to find out. So I know today a number of you are having difficulties with lockdown and you're feeling a bit sad and you're missing your friends and you're missing coming into school and playing at break time or lunchtime. Some of you might even be able to miss your, might be missing your work and some of you might even be missing assemblies or I don't know there will be too many of you doing that. But if you are feeling a bit sad, do you remember the last assembly that I told you? Do you remember I showed you the five fingers of help? And I asked you to name five people who could help you if you were struggling with something or if you weren't sure. Because there's two ways of dealing with a problem. You can either keep it all to yourself or you can tell somebody about it. Those are the only two ways. There's nothing else. You can either keep it to yourself and tell somebody. And remember, keeping it to yourself will not solve it. Sometimes you think mummy and daddy are very busy and they don't want to listen. And sometimes mummies and daddies are very busy and it's difficult to listen. But you can't leave a problem like this to yourself. 
I brought some friends with me today and here is Mr. Yellow. Now as you can see Mr. Yellow is having a good time at the moment and there are some words that help us to describe what Mr. Yellow is feeling. He's feeling happy, pleased and cheerful. And it's very easy to see when people are happy, pleased and cheerful because they look happy, pleased and cheerful. But sometimes in the middle of this lockdown I've heard that some boys and girls are not feeling like this at all and that's okay because we can feel the same way um, at different times and people feel differently in different ways as well. Now here's Mr Orange. Mr Orange isn't feeling too great at all. We can see uh, by looking at him that he's not too happy. Now let's see on the back what how we describe Mr Orange. He's miserable, sad and upset and actually we can tell he's miserable, sad and upset simply by looking at him. Now we've got another one here. Now I'm saying they're all Mr. They don't necessarily need to be Mr. But maybe there's a Miss here. So we'll call this one Miss Green. Now look at Miss Green. She's neither like Mr. Yellow. Very, very happy. But nor is she like Mr. Orange. Very, very sad. Very upset. Miss Green feels a little bit differently. The words that describe Miss Green are nervous, anxious and worried. Miss Green isn't very sure what's going on at all. She doesn't sometimes know how to describe what she feels but she knows she doesn't feel good and she knows but it would be quite hard for us to tell by looking at her what she felt. So all of the three, Mr. Rhines, Mr. Yellow and Miss Green, they really need to tell one of their five fingers of help uh, what is going on and the fact that they're feeling not so good. Let's see who else we've got here. We'll call this one a lady as well. Call her Miss Red. Now Miss Red, I think you can tell straight away, is very cross. And some people are very cross at lockdown. They're not able to go out and enjoy themselves. They're not able to hug nanny or granda or auntie this or uncle that. They're not able to say they're not able to play in their sports and they get very angry and they get very cross. And those are some of the words on the back of of uh, Mr. Red's words. Mr. Uh, we've got angry, we've got cross, on the right way, cross, and annoyed. And they describe, and it's quite easy to see that, isn't it? We'll take another lady here, uh, Miss Blue. And again, we can see that maybe Miss Blue is not, it's not as clear as some of the others. Um, the words on the back of Miss Blue describe her maybe as afraid, scared, and right round to frightened. All of our friends here have to know who to say. They all have to think of their five fingers and they have to describe who am I going to ask for help. I wonder who Miss Blue could ask to help. Could she ask Mummy? Could she ask Daddy? Maybe there's an older or younger brother and sister. Maybe they could help her. Maybe they could say to Mum or Dad. And of course people are talking on the phone, they're maybe using Zoom or some sort of video conferencing, FaceTime. Maybe they're able to say to somebody uh, what the score is and what's going on. Here's the last one that we have today and again this is a very clear one that you can see. Uh, this is Mr Pink and Mr Pink is feeling, can you see those words? Fed up and he's also feeling tired, tired of doing things, maybe tired of lockdown and he's also feeling a little bit bored because we're not able to do the same sorts of things that we were able to do. So we've got lots of faces and lots and lots of words but really what we're thinking about is how do you get help? Who do you go to if you're feeling angry or, or annoyed or cross or if you're feeling nervous or worried or anxious because we want you to be happy boys and girls. We want you to find out who it is that you can go to to talk about your problems. Because if you can talk about something then you'll not feel as alone or feel uh, angry or sad or upset. It's not possible to be happy in smiley faces all the time. But we want people to be happy. So it's important that we talk to each other and find out what is going on. And be able to tell people what we're able to do what we're not able to do and how we're feeling. That's very, very important.
So thanks boys and girls for watching today. I hope you enjoyed our little assembly. I'm going to be back on Friday uh, when it is VE Day. It's Friday the 8th, which is the new holiday for VE Day. And I look forward to seeing you again then. Thanks very much and keep safe everyone. Thank you.